I'm Chris Colby, author of How to Make College Seltzer, and this is your craft beer and brewing tip of the week. Now comes the hardest part. You've got to ferment the thing. When you have a mixture of simply sugar and water, the sugar wash, that has a carbon source for the yeast. There's the sugar in there, which is usually sucrose or glucose. There's no other nutrients in it. There's literally no nitrogen, there's no zinc, there's no calcium. The long list of things that the yeast require are just simply absent. And so you have to supply those via adding yeast nutrients. And the most common thing brewers do is they'll add a compound called DAP or diammonium phosphate. This is a compound that adds nitrogen to the mixture and nitrogen is the major nutrient that's required there. Secondarily, they'll add what's in general called a complete yeast nutrient. And this is a blend made by any company that supplies yeast, typically has multiple yeast nutrient blends and these supply all the uh, necessary ingredients. So the complete should contain a little bit of everything. Most complete nutrient Mixes also contain DAP, but trial and error, people have found that adding a little bit extra DAP is what's required. At home, for about a five gallon batch of hard seltzer, about a quarter ounce of complete yeast nutrients should do the job. Maybe add a pinch of DAP on top of that and you should be fine. Both of these, you can generally add in the boil. If you happen to pick a type of yeast nutrients, and there are some out there that contain vitamins, and you'll probably know if they do, but if they do contain vitamins, then you'll need to add that during fermentation and not the boil because the boil will destroy the vitamins. Yeast require about 250 to 300 parts per million of free amino nitrogen, or it's sometimes called yeast available nitrogen. And adding the level of nutrients that I just said should get you there. I mean, there are ways, especially if you're a winemaker, to measure nitrogen in your sugar wash. And if you want to do it, 250 to 300 parts per million is your target. A lot of brewers seem convinced that there are only a few yeast strains that can ferment a hard seltzer. And I get asked a lot, like, what's the strain I should be using? One thing to keep in mind is that almost any beer strain, almost any wine strain, and certainly any distiller strain can be used. There are some that are better and worse. On the beer side, it's mainly the alcohol content that it can ferment to. But if you're only fermenting at four to five percent alcohol, it doesn't really matter. But even if you're a commercial brewer and brewing the higher gravity ones, most beer yeast can ferment uh, from 18 to 22 degrees bricks. Okay, that's the same as saying 18 to 22 percent sucrose. And it's also roughly the same as saying 18 to 22 degrees Play-Doh. The Play-Doh and brick scales are very similar. So you can get almost any beer strain to work. It just takes some experimentation with how much yeast nutrients to add. Some yeast strains require a lot of nutrients. Some are nitrogen hogs. Others can do what with much less. And you can start out, if you're gonna produce a lot of hard seltzer from a certain strain that you like, you can make a bunch of small fermentations and just add progressively more yeast nutrients to each and see which level of nutrients is the lowest level that you can get the fermentation to run to completion. For more on making great hard seltzer at home, click the link below.